July 1932 marked the moment Zhu Liang Sung had been preparing for most of his life. In his role as the honorary secretary of the CNAAF, he would be bringing a Chinese athlete to the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. The first time ever for China. As a pioneer, one of the first to plant the seeds for China's participation in the Olympic Games, this was an important milestone in his life. Embarking on the realization of his first dream, for China to attend the Olympics, he was about to make the country he loved a player in the international world of sports. Unfortunately for Zhu Liang Song and for China, the Los Angeles Olympics were held at a time when the nation was in chaos. The Japanese had just invaded northeastern China and set up the puppet regime, Manchukuo. Given conditions, the Chinese government originally had no interest in participating in the LA Olympics. But, hearing that Manchukuo was attempting to send Chinese runner Liu Changchun to the games, under their banner, an intervention occurred meant to prevent the Japanese from stealing the Chinese dream. Liu Changchun the fastest runner in the nation was to become the single member of the Chinese team to compete in LA as a Chinese athlete. 1932年奥运会主要是我们国内发生了两大事件。第一个，日本人九一八事变侵占了我们中国的东三省。当时的情况之下，就是我们有一种国难当头这样子一种感觉。第二个，南方发了水灾。许多地区都受到了灾害的冲击，所以在这个情况之下，本来我们就国民政府已经是不愿意派一个队到洛杉矶奥运会。可是当时由于日本鬼子，他就是说有一种成立的伪曼国，这曼洲国好像也是要派人
they are very proud of him. Say, hey, you are the hero. You are the first one to take part in the Olympic game. Liu Changsheng is the hero. Sure, you are the hero too. So from that time, my grandpa always the hero in the family. He was back from Los Angeles. He did give my grandmother a very special gift. That is the challenge. Maybe this is the first medal for China. Zhu Liangsong left for Los Angeles three weeks before the rest of the delegation. His goal was to prepare the way for the others, carrying out registration procedures and finding accommodations. Given the limited funding he had received, he was determined to make the best arrangements for China's only competing Olympic athlete, Liu Chong Chong. My grand-uncle first he, he arrived in San Francisco, not Los Angeles. So from San Francisco, he drove the car, bring someone, with him is the, another one is a member of the Federation, the member, Sun Guo Chen and his wife. Together, they go to the Los Angeles. So when they got Los Angeles, they went to the IOC head office to check out what's the man, Zhu Guo, is take part of the game. When they got the news, the IOC never recognized the man, Zhu Guo. So they are very happy. They're really very happy. They know their dream will come true. They don't have, the Federation don't have the much money to support everyone, so stay in a very nice place. So they want to save some money, support athletics to the Olympic Village. That's the best place for the athletics because it's near the game ground. So for himself, he wants to find another place to save money. So he met his, his friend, Miss Edward. Miss Edward is a very close friend with my grand auntie. They study in the same college in the United States. This time she lives in Los Angeles. So my grand uncle is welcomed by her. He said, you can stay at my home. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can save a lot of money on that. So my grand uncle is very appreciative of that.奥运其实是一种仲裁参与的过程，既要参与了就可以能够代表中国，我觉得它就很杰出。我们就是在一席之位，也要下很大的决心。中国参加奥运会的时候，就是每一个中国人的荣耀。如果一次没有成功，可以
even have some tears in his eyes. He said, next time I will go earlier than usual. So make promise I will get in time every time. Zhu Liang Song used every opportunity to get involved in each aspect of the Olympic Games, which included a roster of demonstrations and workshops associated with new methodologies in sports development. Among his most important contributions, he participated on behalf of China in the first International Recreation Congress, held in conjunction with the Games, where he was proud to introduce the traditional Chinese martial arts, Wushu, for the first time to the outside world. But in this meeting, in this meeting, my grand uncle introduced Wu Su to the uh, Western the first time, I think. Because after the eighth Far Eastern game, they already shoot the people, the Wu Su. They everybody very interesting. So before they he go to the Los Angeles, he and the Federation, they already decided use this time, use this opportunity to tell the world what yes, the Zhongguo Wu Su yes. So the, his speech is very vivid and also is very successful. Many, many people interested about this Zhongguo Wu Su. My grand uncle not only showed them the, some of the pictures, also used his movement to tell the people what Wu Su is like this. <coughs> so the people were interested about that and the people think, oh, this is a kind of sports like boxing and like jams and like something they already see in the Western country, like a boji, something like this. Many people is very excited. So after the meeting, many people, also the official from the international community say, is there any opportunity you can bring the Wusu delegation to the Olympic game? So that time my grandpa said, I hope so. Maybe if fast, we can do that at next Olympic game. While Zhu Liang paved the way for China's participation in Los Angeles, the rest of the delegation had left Shanghai and embarked on the American ship, the U.S. Wilson, for a 25-day boat trip that would make a stop in Japan before bringing them to the long-awaited Olympic Games in America. The delegation included Liu Chongchuan, his coach, Song Jun Fu, attaché and federation member, Liu Shui Song, Xuan Gua Chuan, student and teacher at Jiao Tong University in Shanghai, and Tua Ping, an American who had worked for the YMCA in China for many years. When the delegation arrived, Zhu Liang had made sure that they would receive a hero's welcome, especially from the local Chinese community in Los Angeles. So before Liu Chongsun arrived in Los Angeles, so every Chinese and the overseas Chinese live in Los Angeles, they know the news and they know the date, what time the Liu Chongsun will arrive. The day the Liu Changsheng arrived, it is just before the game is open, it's uh, July 28th. So many Chinese, overseas Chinese and some other foreign friends, they wait for that to welcome the only athletes from China. The Los Angeles Games were held while the United States was in the middle of the Great Depression. The competitor turnout for the Games was also the lowest since the Games began as many nations and athletes were unable to pay for the long trip to the United States. The organizing committee, however, had made every effort to turn the event into a success. The brand new Olympic Stadium was the biggest in the world and was built especially for the occasion. And for the first time, an Olympic village was constructed to make conditions easier for the athletes. Olympic 来自于世界各个不同的民族
能够寄托你精神上面追求的这种地方。还有娱乐设施现在特别多，不管运动员你在休息的时候需要什么娱乐，它都可以提供。The Los Angeles Olympic Summer Games officially opened on July 31, 1932. The opening ceremony, an extremely grand event, was a bittersweet moment for China. Although the nation was finally able to attend for the first time since the modern games convened in Athens in 1896, the largest country in the world was represented by a single athlete. July 31st, that's the day, the opening ceremony. This is the first time China delegation will appear in the Olympic Games. The delegation has six people. The first one is Liu Changchen. He holds the flag, the China flag, in front of the delegation. So behind him, uh, three or four meters, that's my grand uncle. He is the representative of the nation. Then after him, there's four other members, including Liu, uh, Sun Guoquan, Liu Xuesong, Tuo Ping, and the coach Song Junfu. So this is the first time everybody, they went, ah, this is the China. The first time they see the Chinese delegation went to the, uh, the game. At that time, you can have a leader, it's not good. Because at that time, our country is poor, it's still difficult. To compare to the speech, the speech, the speech, the speech, the speech, 他都一个人去参加比赛。有梦想就是有希望，没有梦想连希望都没有了。我觉得每个人都是要抱着希望而生存的，这样呃才会有意义。The sweetness of Zhu Liang's Olympic dream, however, did not last long. Liu Chongchun, not yet recovered from his long boat trip to America, was registered to participate in both the 100 and 200 meter dash. In the 100 meters, the proud athlete who competed alone for his country gained the lead in the first 80 meters, but then lagged behind and was finally eliminated in the heats. He fared no better in the 200 meters. Liu Chongchun was of course disappointed, but for Zhu Liangsong, Winning a medal was not what China's first participation at the Olympics was about. So, it doesn't matter you win or not. The very important thing for my grand uncle, for Liu Chuanchen, he just wants to present that we are Chinese, we are the first time, we are now, we are coming. That's the very important. Being part of the Olympic event was a huge victory in itself for Zhu Liang Song. The Olympic slogan says, after all, the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. But for my grand uncle, besides watching the games, he studied many other things. He also visited many other associations, for basketball association, baseball association, and want to learn something from them. Because when he's come back, he still work for the, the Chinese Federation, so they were uh, make many rules for this association. So he studied many things besides the Olympic Games. He bring back many materials from the Olympic Games. My grand also studied the training system for the athletics. He found out the American do the very good training system. They have a system, not only by coach, by person. They have a whole system. From the very beginning, when the children were very young, they have learned something. Then step by step, they will become a good athletics. So he said, this is very important for China. He bring this experience back. So teach the Chinese people to how to popularize the game. This is very important. You cannot only concentrate for the athletics from the middle school, for the college, university. That's not enough. You have to let every people to love the sports. So more and more people love sports the more and more and more the good results will happen. So this is what he studied. My grandpa really did a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time to study things like this. The Chinese delegation stayed on in Los Angeles until the end of the games. 
on August 20th, 1932, the long boat trip back to Shanghai started. The delegation could not have known what kind of welcome they would receive upon their return, but the occasion was a joyous one, with hundreds of people waiting to greet them when they arrived. When they come back from Los Angeles, everybody gave them a very big welcome, including Liu Changsheng. Every, everybody in the country said, think he is still a very big hero, even he didn't win any gold medals. But this day, he's, what he did is a big thing for the country, for the for first time for China. When my grand-uncle come back, he said one thing is very pity. It's not, not so good because when in the big reception before and after the game held in Los Angeles, the many countries have a big delegations, many officials there. They feel their country is very strong, but only China only have one athletics and one representative there, so they feel very lonely. My grand uncle really hoped the country will send more people there, especially more official be there to represent the country. With his first dream realized, to have China present itself on the international stage at the 1932 Summer Olympic Games, Zhu Liangsong returned home to his country recognizing that many steps had to be taken before his second dream could come true. To send a full team to the Olympic Games, he would put into practice much that he had learned from his first experience. The 1936 Olympic Games, to be held in Berlin, were only four years away.